Okay, Tom, I'm so excited about this talk. Tell us about <laughs> developing automated camera traps for insects. Yeah, thanks. So uh, as it's already been promoted in the the ads in the in the, in the intermission, um, there is a new newish kind of group in Wild Labs which are looking at automated camera traps for insects. So I want to talk a little bit about why this group exists, how it came to be, and the kind of things uh, that we're doing. Kind of give a bit of a flavour of that. So. Uh, I was at a conference recently of AI people and I felt I had to explain why wildlife is important. I probably don't have to do that for this audience, but I put this up anyway. This is the, the Living Planet Index, right? So populations of species monitored around the world have seen huge declines uh, since the 1970s. And this Living Planet Index is put together by WWF and partners. But this index doesn't really have any insects in it. It's got maybe like a, a hint of butterfly in there, but they're just like not represented, which is absolutely mad when you think about what proportion of the world's biomass and species are insects. So this visualization I nicked uh, from uh, Nat Geo were involved in creating it, but you can see that the uh, described species in green and then the line uh, predicting where kind of the total size of undescribed species. I mean, the, the plants and the vertebrates, yeah, great, we know a lot about them, but insects, which are such a huge part of this planet, are just really poorly understood. And you know, as E.O. Wilson, the famous ecologist said, these things, they, they run this world. Like they are, they are integral to pretty much every ecosystem on the planet. We, we've got to be monitoring these guys and, you know, I love tigers and seals with cute faces and, and bats as, as much as the next person, but we've got to be on these insects and it's kind of a call to this community. We've got to be doing more for insects, monitoring insects. Hell, there's parts of the world we don't even know what species exist. We're losing these insect species before they're even described. We've got to be doing more to understand these species. So at the end of 2021, um, there was a bit of technology developed at Aarhus University in Denmark, which is a kind of automated system for monitoring moths. And the concept's pretty simple. You have a, a, a UV light that sits above a board um, that attracts in moths. So, so moths are attracted to light, as you probably know. Uh, they're particularly interest, uh, attracted to UV lights, um, although there's species-specific variation in the, in the frequencies of light they're attracted to. That UV light brings them in, then they land on a board, camera takes a picture of the board, uh, job done. And that camera can be motion triggered or it can take pictures on interval. So you can see a lot of, lot of analogies with, with um, camera traps that are used for, for, for mammals, vertebrates, right? Uh, we use this on a project for Network Rail. They own all the railways in England. And we found that this thing worked pretty well. So um, I work at the UK Centre for Ecology and Hydrology. It's a not-for-profit research organisation in the UK. It's the largest biodiversity department uh, in the UK, scores higher than Oxford and Cambridge, we like to say that. Um, and we have a workshop and we used um, our engineers in the workshop partnered with, with us and the kind of biodiversity monitoring team to build version two of this called Amy, the Amy trap. And the Amy trap is like that first one, except it doesn't leak so much. Uh, it's super robust. This has been tested under half a meter of water. It's been tested in a 60 degree oven for two days, taking pictures all the time. So it's, 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 it's pretty bulletproof. Uh, we've run it out in Panama and it worked really well. The light looks a little bit different now. We're using a, a lepi lead, which some people might be familiar with, designed specifically for attracting um, nocturnal insects, moths. Um, and we uh, we don't trust just to attract moths. We get things like Orthoptera, like crickets on the, on the top here. At the moment, we're kind of ignoring those, but there's a whole other world of, of insects we can be looking at beyond uh, the moths. I threw this in here because, you know, it's a techie crowd. Uh, please you with some, you know, some wires and gadgets uh, going on in here. Um, the highlights are we've got a, it's powered by Raspberry Pi, uh, not powered by, it's run by the Raspberry Pi. It's powered by solar and batteries, saving onto an SSD. It's got a timer switch, which is turning on and off. A watchdog that means that when it loses power, it, it, it falls apart gracefully and doesn't corrupt all your data. And then various wires that connect things together. We're working on a version three, which is going to like miniaturize a lot of this, probably move away from powerful Raspberry Pi to something a bit more mean, lean and mean. Um, this is what it looks like when it's running. So the lights in that box, the, the camera's in that box on the right. It's taking pictures of the board. It's got a, a, a ring light around the camera. That's primarily for getting a good photo, but it does also help to attract in some of the moths once they're brought in close by the UV light. Uh, as I said, it's battery powered and solar, so it can run. Uh, if you've got good light, it can run 
for a full season on its on its on its Todd and record onto that big uh, internal hard drive. Um, it's not. It's only. It's not on its own though. There are other other similar systems. I've learned about a new one already from the chat. Um, there's other similar systems that are trying to monitor insects. They all each have their sort of pros and cons, well, the cons and do it in slightly different ways. But what we, I, I kind of swiftly realized that this is a community that is really nascent. It's really young, and we have an ability here to avoid pitfalls uh, that other communities have fallen into, where we can kind of we're small enough to all kind of get together in a room and chat about what we're doing and share best practice. And instead of all working in parallel and reaching the same conclusion, we can all stand on top of each other's shoulders and save years of development time and really get there much faster. Because you know, the biodiversity crisis that is affecting insects, you know, well, it's kind of already happened, right? Um, so we need these things uh, really urgently. So the idea behind the kind of, um, the idea behind this project, Easy Rider, was let's bring these people together let's share our, our knowledge, let's talk to each other, let's try these things out in the field next to each other, uh, and let's, let's build a community and, and share that understanding to the, to the benefit of everyone, most of all, to the benefit of biodiversity, all right? We're not all here just to, to have great careers, we're here to save the planet, so let's get on and do that. Um, so one of the things that we're doing as a part of this community is to develop the, the Wild Labs Forum, uh so this is a this has really served us well we didn't want to go and build something new um when we've you know wild labs already fantastic at doing what it does and for me it's been great to connect with people uh, all over the world who are doing similar things and great to just have people you know shooting out a question of you know what camera should i use or what lighting works best and we can all just chip in chip in our ideas and, and collectively move this discussion forward just so much faster um, you know, the pub, we can't wait for that publication cycle. We can't even wait for like preprints, right? I want, I want to hear what you're doing now in this field season um, so that we can share these ideas and, and move things along a lot more quickly. Um, on that note, you know, we are not doing the AI. We're partnering up with people in, in Canada. We, we don't have a formal project that, that is financing. You know, we're not financing uh, this AI, but they're working on AI, we're working on hardware, and we work well together. So, so that's what we're doing. Um, I'm not going to go through this in too much detail. It does object detection and tracking on the unit. Uh, it does object detection and tracking. It is a binary classifier for moth, non-moth. Then there's a species, species level classifier on the moths. Uh, this is in development. It's about 80% accuracy at the moment. Um, but this is constantly being developed and improved. And I'd love to talk, Carly, to you about the, the annotation software, because that's something a web platform. That's something we were, I think we're probably thinking about kind of replicating for this. So we could talk to you about that. Um, this is kind of what that looks like when it's it's running. We're going to be moving it to the edge um, as well. So that will be coming. We're going to be adding acoustics to the device because you've already got the compute and the data storage and the power. So just adding an audible mic, ultrasound mic. So we can do all that jazz as well. And very keen to you know borrow models that already existed, borrow uh, infrastructures that already exist. We're not we're not trying to reinvent reinvent the wheel. One thing that is cool here is that um, it's obviously got the same individual and multiple frames. It's using the images across all of those frames to arrange at the to arrive at the species classification, uh, which is which is kind of neat. That's something they implemented like two weeks ago. Um, so uh, link at the top uh, to our website for the Amy trap. But like I said, it's not the only tool. There are other tools like the Diopsis, like the Automoth. So go check them out as well. There's a great thread on, on the forum all about projects introductions. Um, that's got all of the different units and stuff people are making. So go and check all those out. That's a wild lab thing. And just a special thanks to the people who have been involved around the Amy trap. Uh, Alba, who's leading on our computer vision stuff. Uh, Simon, who's a lead engineer, has been a real crucial partner. And you know, I've learned that partnering with engineers is like super, super great. And you should definitely do that. Uh, to David, who's been leading uh, leading the project. And if I got my jazzy Amy, oh, the video's not working. And the Amy trap, which had like a jazzy disco light going on top, which is <laughs> at a conference that we were at uh, last week. So uh, thank you very much. Tom, superb. I um, I just, it's been so interesting to watch. Um, I mean, the call to action that you included in that talk was, was incredibly powerful, but it's also just been so interesting for us to watch how many people are coming out of the woodworks and like working on insects and working on and, and coming together through your group. So you guys have done a superb job um, pulling that community together and bringing them together. I wonder if we, do you have any advice for other people who kind of see this and just be like, 
God, that's what we need. Like, what, what's your advice for, for um, bringing a community together and trying to step on each other's shoulders? No, that's, that, that feels like the wrong saying, but like build yeah, yeah. on each other. Um, what's your advice? Yeah, I think um, I get in when the community is young. Obviously, that's, that's not always possible, right? But I found that when you've got a really young community, there's not so many of the power dynamics that you have maybe in communities that existed for a long time. So everyone's everyone in this community is just a year or two into it. Everyone's really keen to collaborate, very open. So it's been kind of pushing on an open door. Yeah. Um, I think going in, trying trying to leave all the baggage at the door and keep reminding yourself why you're in it you know, for the common good. And, and if someone doesn't want to be a part of it because they want to do something commercial, then then that's fine. They can do that. Ultimately, they'll, they'll probably lose out by not being part of the community. They'll, they'll come back in a year, a year, year or two time want to be part of it. Um, so I think, yeah, that, that's that's really good. And, um, you know, setting up webinar series, setting up these kind of focal points um, where people will start to come together and start to hear more, that will kind of build the community. But but ultimately, you know, we, we were funded. Uh, we had funding. And I'm glad to say we've, we've just got another two years funding to support this, this global network. Yeah, so that obviously really helps. Um, and we try and channel as much as what we do um, into you know into the webinars get those advertised on wild labs and when you know writing blogs and things about what we're doing get those on wild labs so trying to ensure you're always like operating with the windows open right so when you're having meetings people who are still outside they can hear what you're doing they can look in and see what you're doing so always operate uh so people can see what you're doing and then that community will grow i love that so much operating with the windows open i think that's my favorite community uh saying i've heard heard yet um and one fight so the best way to get involved there's quite a few people here um like excited by this is to pop into the group and say hello in the project thread is that the best way to get involved yeah absolutely i was super interested to see when people were introducing themselves there were people who were doing insects and especially when there's like stuff i've not heard about please pile into the project introductions uh thread and 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 say what you're doing there's quite a lot of people i think looking at that um so yeah it's a great great place to share what you're up to and then yeah we advertise all the activities that we're doing uh, through that there's a bunch of other projects that are that are starting up um some of them are potentially big networking projects yeah. um which we'll be talking about in there and there'll be opportunities for people to get involved with those and just to note, if you want to catch up on Tom and the team have been posting all of their past webinars, um, the recordings into their group, and you just need to go to the events page and look at past events and they're all shared there or in the links. So just have a poke around um, or ask if you can't find anything. Um, but otherwise, um, thank you so much, Tom. Uh, any last comments before we go? For me? Yeah, why not? Oh, well, massive thanks to you guys. Like. <laughs> You know, Wild Labs has been really impactful for our community. So thanks for thanks for everything you do. And man, I wish I joined these variety hours like years ago. This is awesome. You guys do everyone on this call just does awesome stuff. Keep yeah. up with the work. Look, we we it's 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 pretty easy finding some some great projects. So um we're we're delighted to be here and and joined by um everyone who is who's spoken today. And if you guys have suggestions or want to come and share your projects on one of these variety hours, drop me a message or an email with either suggestions or putting yourself forward. Um and the best way we I usually pick people interesting projects interesting conversations that i'm seeing on twitter or on wild labs so also the best way to to get featured in one of these to get an invite um is to get involved on wild labs as well um right now i'm going to wrap up now but we will hang out as we always do afterwards for uh, uh the section that's not recorded um so if you're watching the recording recording we'll see you later but um uh everyone else if you're, you're welcome to hang out with us and, and just chat conservation tech for for a little while um thank you very much to the to all of our speakers today and we'll see you next month um for the next variety hour see you later